Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Today we are going to present a special report on the uh, role of ethics in the global PR and communication model. As you know, in the Global Alliance, uh, we are celebrating the Global Ethics Month. And uh, we would uh, like to share with you, and when I say we, I mean myself, Angela Yoza, and uh, Clara Fontan, the Director of Intelligence and Knowledge at Corporate Excellence Center for Reputation Leadership. What we are going to share with you is uh, the global PR and communication model, which has been uh, developed in joint collaboration with uh, the Global Alliance, in partnership with the Global Alliance. Uh, please go ahead uh, with the, thank you. And the sponsor contribution of uh, Yorenti Quenk. Everybody knows about uh, the Global Alliance. No need for presentation. It is the largest organization, an association of uh, more than uh, 300,000 associates all over the world. But I need to say uh, just a few words about Corporate Texan Center for Reputation Leadership. We are a non-profit uh, think tank, an accelerator of uh, innovation research and training specialized in uh, intangible assets with uh, a history of more than uh, 19 years working together. This uh, organization exists thanks to, generos to the generosity of uh, the major, a few, <laughs> or some of the major Spanish and Latin American corporations. So, this joint project project is uh, basically a project in partnership between uh, corporate excellence and uh, the global alliance with uh, an international steering committee representing different regions and uh, personalities may i say uh, starting with uh, jose manuel velasco the immediate past chair of the global alliance justin green the president of Global Alliance, representing uh, both the academia and uh, Latin America, we have uh, Dr. Amibel Sanchez, Dr. Wali Adamolekum from uh, Nigeria, and uh, Asia is represented uh, by Krita Kemal. So, this project has been uh, a two years project of uh, research and uh, consensus. Basically, uh, it has been conducted consulting more than 1,400 professionals in 47 countries. And the aim of this uh, model is to, to have uh, an answer from uh, organizations, from companies, academics and uh, and other institutions to the main uh, challenges that we all have on one hand it is about building a long-lasting differentiation and at the same time building trust and social legitimacy to maintain our license to operate if you get those two challenges right what we uh, obtain is basically advocacy at large scale and uh, engagement with our stakeholders, which means by engagement, building and strengthening the uh, social and relationship capital with our all stakeholders. So let's start by describing very shortly, but very briefly, the five building blocks of our model, starting with uh, its core component. The core component is a purpose, a corporate purpose. It is a cornerstone of, of the model. The next one, the next building block is uh, 
corporate brand and culture which is uh, basically the way to activate and to express the purpose in all the touch points of, of our brand and also through the corporate values, which means the attitudes and uh, behavior of our employees. The next building block is reputation and mitigation of reputational risks. This uh, building block is uh, the result of uh, activating purpose through the brand and the culture. What we get is a strong feeling of uh, trust, admiration, and respect, which is uh, another way of describing reputation. In order to activate purpose, brand, culture, and reputation, we need communications. This is the, uh, the next building block, and it is a very uh, holistic one. You see that uh, it's uh, all over the place, all over the model, because without communication, as you know, nothing exists. The next one is also a holistic building block. It is the capabilities of connecting with all stakeholders, connected intelligence, which means that our organization is closely uh, aware of the expectations and also the requirements that the society is asking organizations to fulfill. Those are the five building blocks, the ones well, which allow uh, organizations to, to face in a positive way the challenges that we have in green color. And uh, what about ethics? What is the role of ethics into this global communication model? The very starting point, when we refer to the Global Alliance activities and the, uh, the heritage of our model, we, uh, have, we can mention the Melbourne mandate in 2012, and uh, that mandate define and maintain an organizational or the organization character and, and values. And uh, that Melbourne mandate had in, in its core uh, pillars ethics. Then the Global Capabilities Framework was launched in 2018 and when we see the 11 core capabilities that any uh, chief communication officer has to have three uh, or specifically two of them have directly to do or related with ethics the first one is to align communication strategies with the uh, organizational purpose and values and the tenth one, which is work within an ethical framework on behalf of the organization in line with professional and society expectations. So we have built on those two uh, previous uh, fantastic works done and carried out by the Global Alliance. And now, and now what we are seeing is how it uh, fits with the results of our research. Please go on. Yeah, just to mention that we are seeing that in our research, in our model, and according to the opinion of peer and communication professional, uh, increasing reputation, building trust, and ethical practices are the top priorities for the future of organizations. So we are seeing that ethic is one of the top priorities for PR and communication professional. And it is a key driver to generate trust and reputation. All the studies that we are following mention the idea of being ethical as an opportunity of companies' leadership. Because if we want to generate trust and reputation, we need to be ethical. So we are seeing that ethic represent approximately more than 76% of trust and reputation capital. 
So this is something important because we are seeing that today uh, companies are uh, increasing their role uh, and this is because of working or, or this is why we should promote ethical behaviors and embracing, embracing ethical inside of the organizations. And we wanted to introduce this idea because ethics, as Angel was mentioning, was in the cornerstone of the Melbourneer mandate and also the capabilities framework, but it's also in the cornerstone of the global PR and communication model. And we are going to explain why. It is basically because when uh, a company defines and activates uh, its corporate purpose, which is uh, the first step, the first building block of our model, what we are doing is translating, translating directly ethics, which comes from the Greek, the Greek word ethos, meaning character and purpose. So, our purpose, uh, the center of the model is basically referring to ethics and the way ethics comes to life it's because it's a framework for guiding the uh, decision making process and also aligning employees behaviors that alignment guarantees consistency coherence and integrity so it is an abstract concept if you want ethics but it is expressed through the activation and implementation of a strong corporate purpose, belief, and, and values. And we are seeing that purpose and ethic um, should be understood as the fundamental basis of strategy and as this framework for guiding aligning behaviors inside of the organization. It is according to the to our research and our model. It is um, for purpose and ethic are a, a powerful tool for enhancing and aligning all the dimensions of the model and all the um, an intangible asset. When we talk about the strength and brand, culture, reputation, and communication, we need to work inside uh, to work on this idea of um, defining and activating a strong corporate purpose. And there is a, a strong corporate purpose. Also, we are seeing that even if we know that it's really relevant for organizations and I'm an, most of our professionals said that it was an important concept to to embrace and only half of, our, of the organizations have implemented corporate purpose and are working on these ideas so this is why even knowing that it's important to 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 generate trust and reputation to to promote aligning uh, align, alignment uh, inside of the organization there is still a long road ahead to promote purpose and ethic driven organizations also we are seeing that uh, if we want to activate a shared belief inside of the organization and promote uh, ethical behaviors, we need to define our purpose and our ethos uh, with our stakeholders, uh, not for them. So it means to integrate a participatory process for defining an, activa an activating purpose. And it involves both internal and external stakeholders, and it's, and it's key if we were to promote authentic behaviors. And we are seeing, according to the model, that there is a, a, a greater impact if we promote a 360-degree uh, process in the way that we define and activate and implement the purpose and the ethical, uh, ethical code inside of the organizations. Then, then, sorry, then if we follow a traditional method from top to down. So we are seeing that if we want to promote uh, alignment inside of the organization and promote uh, this culture of ethic within the organization and uh, 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 um, achieving all the levels of the organization, uh, we need to promote this participatory process or this idea of taking into account the opinion of internal and external stakeholders. Also, there is something important according to our model when we ask a PR and communication professional about how to translate business ethics into practice. They uh, mentioned that there are some important ethical behaviors to embrace a culture of ethic. 
and between between them we see that the most important behaviors to promote ethic inside of the organizations are related to honesty in communications based on fact also excellence communication performance based on ethical codes and transparencies also they mentioned the idea of training staff and employees in ethical issues and using the ethical guide in the decision making processes and also they mentioned privacy uh, so here we can see how to introduce or embrace um, ethic according to, to, to the opinion of PR and communication professional. Also, there is something in, in so, well, we can highlight something important uh, related to, um, to purpose and ethic as a way of mitigating reputational risk. And when we ask a professional about how to mitigate reputational risk, the code of conduct as a framework for guiding decisions inside of the organization and promote behaviors uh, um, uh, is the most important aspect for facing and mitigating reputational risk. So again, we see that uh, ethic and purpose could be seen as a, an opportunity to create value and, and at the same time as a tool for mitigating reputational risk using the code of conduct as the framework for guiding the decision that we make inside of the organization following these ideas that Angel was mentioning about coherence, integrity and consistency. Uh, also, there is something important. Uh, maybe if, uh, if you come back to, to the okay. question, I would like, if you allow me, to add something. Yes, please, Angel. Yes, this idea of uh, ethics as uh, an important factor to mitigate reputational risks, I think it's a, a very relevant one. In a, if we uh, have a look at this chart and uh, remember that uh, this is a result of uh, a research conducted in 47 countries with more than 1,400 interviewees, what we see is that uh, our professionals, chief communication officers, see a strong correlation between ethics and uh, the mitigation of uh, reputational result, uh, risks. And obviously, one of the uh, means to, to integrate a culture of ethics within an organization is uh, basically by defining a uh, very uh, demanding kind of conduct, but not only that. It is also about training employees on this idea of uh, reputational risks and training them also on the uh, importance of uh, ethical behavior, because at the end of the day, they do represent uh, the organizations. They are the ambassadors who build or destroy the reputation of an organization. That's why I wanted to come back to, to this chart, just to highlight the importance of, uh, of this idea linking together ethics and uh, risk mitigation. Yeah, well seen, Angel. And it's important to highlight the role of employees as builder of reputation, uh, brand ambassadors, and this idea of, this idea of protect um the the organization value because how they behave and um, represent and um, how the organization think so it means that they are going to to impact on people uh, and other stakeholder minds and um, so it's important to 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 work really hard on this idea of the code of conduct the the purpose and activate these ideas through the employees' behaviors, because at the end of the day, as you were saying, they represent the organization in all the touch points that they have with different stakeholders. And there is something something that we wanted to highlight today, and is related to the code of conduct uh, of Global Alliance as a global, global standard. When we ask PR and communication professional about the code of ethic that they that they know, they mentioned the Global Alliance PR and Communication Ethics Code as the most important one. So we wanted to highlight that it's something something important to take into account as a global standard for the profession or the function of PR and communication. 
Yes, and before uh, entering in uh, this demonstration of uh, the role of PRM communications function in value creation and risk mitigation, if you allow me, Clara, I would like to come back to slide 22, which was uh, the first slide of results of uh, our research. It is a slide which is a little bit difficult to, to fully understand and needs uh, some explanation. Obviously, the, uh, the model itself is uh, fully explained in uh, the full report, which is available to all of, all of you. Here, I just wanted to highlight uh, a couple of ideas because uh, uh, the main um, insight that we uh, discovered uh, running out this uh, piece of research is that uh, purpose and ethics are a powerful tool to be able to enhance the excellent management of the rest of the intangible. What we have discovered is that uh, when companies uh, or organizations define and implement their, their purpose, there is a direct correlation with the fact that they are going to manage in a better way uh, both communication as well as brand and culture. And also, there is a, a role for the uh, chief communication officer because it's not only a question of uh, defining and activating the purpose, but as Clara has said, the key thing is to do that in, uh, in the right way. And the right way is by conducting a professional methodology to define and activate purpose. It is not about uh, defining your purpose for your stakeholders top down from the uh, board of directors. And then we, you start the communication process and nothing happens. Basically, the idea is that you have to define and activate your purpose and your ethics culture, not for your stakeholders, but with them. If you do this in a large scale, a deaf a consultancy uh, approach, uh, listening to the expectation of your stakeholders and and checking that their personal their personal purpose fits with the corporate purpose of the organization then you are going to have an extremely powerful tool of transformation driving you to excellence and to ethics so that's why i, I want just to to highlight and then if you wish we can come back to the previous slide, well, to the next one. Yes. Say that the... Yes, go ahead, Clara. Well, here what we wanted to, to highlight is how the model demonstrates the role of PR communication function in value creation and risk mitigation. Because if we follow all these uh, building blocks, starting with purpose and ethic in the middle of the model, then we will activate this culture of ethic and also the purpose through our brand and culture through the behavior of our employees and also this idea of reputation and reputational risk we will be avoiding uh, and mitigating risk if we implement and activate this uh, culture of, of ethic since um be, uh, since the organization but also the concept of reputation the third building block is related to this idea of following uh, society expectations and introducing stakeholder demands and ethical requirements in, in the process of making decisions. And this is where reputation is a, a powerful tool to connect what's happening outside of the organization uh, with the decision that we make. And then we are seeing also that we have communication as a way to tell people and tell society things that we are doing. We need communication as a way to, to activate all the values that we have as an organization. And the fifth um, 
um, the fifth building block of the model is related to integrate uh, an intelligent system of social listening uh, and following social trends uh, to anticipate ethical requirements and, and stakeholder demands. So this is why we could uh, we can understand this model as a way of creating value and risk mitigation. Mm -hmm. And let's, uh, let me come back to the, the previous slide. Okay. Just, I, I would like to say that now we are going to talk about you. What is your role? And there are four key points, four takeaways that we would like to share with you. The first one, is that uh, we can see all, all, all over the world that ethics has become a key factor in generating trust and reputation. And ethical behaviors require uh, not only uh, the commitment of the uh, top management, but also a shared culture of ethics within the organization as a, a very powerful tool to filter and to guide decisions and aligning employees' behaviors. We have seen that all over the world during this pandemic, companies who have defined and activated their purpose are acting in a, bit, in a much better way and are deserving the, this uh, strong feeling of being admired and, uh, and trusted. So the only way to create integrity, align behaviors, cohesion, and consistency between what we say and what we do is by having very clearly this idea of a purpose and ethics at the core of what we do. The takeaway number two is that uh, if the main role of uh, an organization is to define um, its purpose and uh, promote uh, business excellence through its decision actions, it requires focusing clear, clearly on stakeholder demands and expectations and being able to create uh, economic, social, ethical, and environmental long-term value to all of them. And the role the next uh, takeaway, the role of the chief communication ethic uh, officer is helping uh, the organization embracing ethical behaviors. And in order to do that, uh, the organization need to know very well what is morally acceptable or inacceptable in society. Because if we know that, if we are connected with this uh, collective intelligence, we will be able to allow the company to anticipate ethical requirements. So the role of the chief communication officers, officer is a very important one because if we may say it is a connecting leader between the organization and its stakeholders. And that is the reason why there is a direct connection, connection between ethics and uh, the role of the chief communication officer because of this uh, idea of in the antenna which allows you to read in a right way and with anticipation the changes in a uh, moral acceptability which will become afterwards ethical and regulatory uh, requirements and the last one is uh, how we can do that, how a chief communication officer, how a PR professional can help the organization in really uh, incorporating ethics into the heart of business activities. And it has to do not with what we say, but uh, with what, how we are compensated. I mean, we require new indicators, new, new KPIs complementing the traditional financial KPIs such as uh, the uh, politics for 
remuneration that's uh, reward uh, or directors and ensure the internal alignment with values and uh, and principles of the organization so it is clear that uh, if the fulfillment in, an, in the everyday uh, behavior of the director the fulfillment of purpose and corporate values has to be rewarded and directly connected to to his bonus so this is the the way you can become a company embracing the long-term value creation both in terms of ethics economics social and environmental capitals if you need to to know more please uh, download all the materials available for you in, uh, on the, in the site of the PR, the Global PR and Communication Model, where you will find uh, a full report, a summary report, a presentation, and, uh, and some other videos. Thank you very much indeed. And now what we are going to do is uh, to have a very short session on Q and A's because we are getting some messages through the uh, YouTube chat. So, Angel, the first one is related to how important is the participation of PR and communication professional in a strategy decision making to ensure ethic guide the corporate strategy, to ensure ethic guide the corporate strategy? Well, I think that this, uh, this question is a very interesting one and has two components. First of all, we have uh, uh, discovered with uh, our uh, research that the chances, the probabilities that uh, a PR and, and chief communication officer participates or not in the uh, top decision of the company, which means the probabilities of uh, belonging to the C-suite are closely related with uh, the idea of being the guide and the leader of the purpose, uh, of the corporate purpose uh, definition and activation. We have seen that uh, if the PR and chief communication officer is leading or participating in uh, this process, the probabilities of uh, participating in the, uh, the C-suite are much higher compared to companies where the uh, PR and CCO is not uh, uh, forming part of the, uh, the steering committee of, of the project and also very uh, in a very different position if we compare the two main methodologies applied by companies all over the world to define their purpose the first one and the and unfortunately it's probably the uh, the, uh, the most common one is a definition which is a uh, uh, done top down from the ceo of the company or the uh, C-suite down to the rest of the organization. When uh, companies are following this method, the, uh, the power of purpose to transform and to build uh, a strongly ethic organization is much more limited if we compare to the other methodology, which is uh, the one when where you define your purpose after a consultation after listening very carefully to the expectations and uh, analyzing the personal purpose of the different stakeholders that you wish to activate. So and when we combine these two factors, the uh, PR and chief communication officer leading the, the process and the process is following a participatory methodology, then we have someone who is going to be part of the C-suite or at least to be consulted 
or the most important decision making processes within the organization. Okay, Angel. There is another idea related to the link between ethic and excellence. If you could develop it a little bit, like when we talk about ethic, business ethic, we are achieving excellence or business excellence. Yes. I think that uh, an excellent organization has an impact on the way the organization is perceived and uh, judged by others. An excellent organization is basically building trust, legitimacy, and also the idea of uh, generating advocacy and engagement. So an excellent organization cannot be uh, understood without a very strong uh, ethics uh, governance. So I think that ethics is one of the key components. Without ethics, you cannot generate trust or maintain or enlarge your license to operate. So in, in the, the Greek world that we mentioned a few slides ago, uh, ethics was closely relations related with virtues, virtuosity. And virtues are basically the behavior that uh, anyone, any society expects from uh, its citizens and organizations. And when we, you go a little bit deeper inside and you try to describe those virtues, then uh, I'm thinking about companies because it's easier to, to apply this concept uh, in my case to companies. What we find out is that uh, there are seven pillars regarding uh, what a society is expecting from, from companies. And if I may uh, describe them very quickly, it is, first of all, well, it's not in order, but uh, I will start with this, ethics. Ethics and integrity, what? That's one of the pillars. The second one has to do with uh, sustainability. The next one has to do with uh, or your own employees. How do you engage with them? How they live? The purpose of the company? So the employees are the third pillar. The fourth one is innovation. Innovation understood as uh, what you do in order to make life easier to anybody. But the next one is uh, performance. In terms of uh, economics, if you are not sustainable from an economic point of view, there will be a strong lack for your uh, existence. And, uh, and then we have leadership. Because uh, if uh, the ones who are at the top of the organization are not embracing all these uh, uh, seven pillars, and embracing this idea of uh, your company as guided by or driven by purpose and ethics, then uh, you will not have the, uh, the most important virtue, which is uh, giving the example. Talk the walk and walk the talk, starting by your top leaders. So, I think that those seven are translated from the antique world to nowadays and applied to the business arena, the uh, translation of virtues into uh, behaviors and expectations. Okay, thank you very much, Angel. I think that we, we don't have um, 
uh, more questions in the chat. So I think that we could um, finish this webinar. Um, as Angel was mentioning, all the materials uh, about the model are available on this site. So you can go there and you can download the full report, the security summary, the full video of the launch, and you can go in deep in each building block of the model and see the relationship between the model and ethic and how it is in the in the in the first step of the model, and something that we should embrace if we want to to follow the roadmap of the future of PR and communication function. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, Clara and I are extremely happy and satisfied to participate in the Global Ethics Month of you know, the Global Alliance. And uh, we share with you our uh, humble contribution to the Ethics Month. Thank you very much indeed. See you soon. See you soon. Bye.